people thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wanted to make sure everybody in the room uh, knows there are microphones in front of you. And if you'll notice, there's a little green light. And if you don't see the green light, that's good. That means it's not on, so you're not being overheard. If you, yeah. um, uh, there should be a button down near the front of that thing to turn it on and off. So uh, for those of us in the room, just remember, um, when, when, it's go when it's going on, uh, when you've got something to say, put it on, immediately take it off. I think Mark can help us in the back if you forget, but uh, we want to focus on that a, a little bit here. So, uh, uh, and at this point, I'll turn it over. Oh, do you want to you wanna do any introductions? Yes. All right. Good morning, everyone. We have an actual real live meeting again. It's probably the first time in 14 months or so. Uh, so it's nice to see real faces and bodies. Um, anyone with a cell phone just off the table because we get some feedback through the mics, please, and put it on vibrate or silent so we don't get interrupted during the meeting. And I'm going to start off by having us do attendance and go ahead and start off there, Holly. Good morning, Holly Hahn, Office of the General Counsel. Jim Kennard, Facilities Construction. New Doctor, Court Member. Ken Lassner, Cork. Frank Simon, Cork. Virginia Ferris, Cork. David Porter, Cork. David Dolan, uh, Facilities Management. Bill, Bill if you want to speak. Yeah, Bill Hugel, Cork. Sam Shannon, Cork. Okay. Thank and you, everyone. Yeah. John Levin, oh, yes. Rail Enterprises representing Piscobich Architects and Wharton Smith Contractors. All right. We have a quorum, so that is good. Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything else. Well, we have else. to vote. Um, no. For what? We, we have to vote to allow any. Oh, the other virtual, anybody that's on allow. virtually. Uh, do you know if we have any Cork members on virtually? Mr. Gelfand is, is on virtual. Oh, I thought Michael couldn't make it today. Okay. All right, then I will put it up. There. Do we have a motion to allow virtual members no, to participate? No, Mike. We're not going to let you. Michael. Okay, that's a first by <laughs> Ken. Need a second? Second. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're looking for extraordinary circumstances. Right. Okay. Or fear of transmission of COVID. Does Michael's voice come through our speakers here or not? Yes, okay. so that uh, the board can hear and then you can vote. Okay. Do we get to see him or just see him? Uh, I think we're just going to. Michael, can you say something? We couldn't hear him. He, he did turn his microphone on. I, I can see him turn his microphone on, but we are not hearing it here in the room. I went to see the dogs. Mark, uh, Murray, do you have a as to what I should do about that? Maybe you type in the reason. Got me now? There you go. There Perfect. You are. That's excellent. Okay, uh, Michael, can you give us a reason you why you cannot for attend? Me to, uh, yes. Well, I'm out of town, first of all. And second, if I was in town, um, I would have a uh, desire not to be in that type of a environment for health purposes. Okay. All right, uh, we had a first by Ken and Virginia, I think, seconded it. Um, no? no, Sam. Sam seconded. Okay, all in favor of allowing Michael to participate virtually? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Michael, you're in. Absolutely. Thank you. For the record, that was a uh, seven to zero. Seven to zero vote. Okay. Question, Mrs. Virginia, are we finished with the primary yes. alternates we're, we are. we're yeah. just all voters, all voters. We're, we are back Virtual to our and here. we are back to our okay. original um, and, and you just let michael be able to vote too so that thank you <laughs> and we would have done the same thing if if previous to the whole alternate primary if somebody was out of town they were on business and they were just connecting by phone correct holly yes okay all right um Anyone with a conflict of interest for anything we're reviewing today? Not hearing any from Michael and not seeing or hearing anything from the members, so no conflict of interest. Cork report. Lou, you handed in our Cork report last month? Yes, it was submitted and all the board members received a copy and there was no discussion. Ah, yes, we have had another 
participant, Tragic. Nice to see you physically here. <laughs> All right. Uh, please note for the record that uh, Tragic McCoy has joined the meeting uh, live, not virtually. Not in Riviera Beach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought we were there? Yeah, I missed it. Well, uh, I live around the corner, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Luke, can you handle a report for this month for us? Uh, yes, sir. Good. Thank you very much. All right. Staff updates. Okay, hey, Jim, do you have anything? Uh, just one thing. I have a uh, uh, sling on today because I was lifting heavy things and putting them down. <laughs> I'll be okay. So we'll, uh, we'll be carrying Jim's stuff out to his car this, uh, this morning. Okay. Well, uh, from, from my perspective, I wanted to let everybody know that, of course, um, we're in the middle of summer. Now, some uh, forgive me for saying this. Well, don't forgive me for saying this. It is what it is. We have a short summer, so therefore we have a little bit of a light summer. We're still doing a lot of work. We're just not doing quite as much uh, because of the, the circumstances. Um, with a uh, started the school year late, ended the school year late, and we're starting our new one up on time. Uh, condensed our, we lost about three weeks into the summer. So we've got about a five week uh, period right now. Um, we're, we're doing, we're still doing a lot of work. You'll see, you'll see that coming up. Um, and in fact, we also have uh, three schools that are opening up. Well, actually two modernizations opening up and a uh, six through eight edition opening up. Um, so those folks are quite busy as well. Um, we're fortunate enough, I, I, I wish to thank the administration for allowing us to meet here uh, today for our Cork meeting. Um, as we all recall, now that we are doing this in person, um, it was, it's a little bit easier than all of us having to wear headsets and microphones and all the back feedback and all that other stuff. So um, we're appreciative that they're allowing us to use this room uh, this month. And we'll see about next month as well. But what I wanted to let everybody know about is that um, we, do have a, we, we do have a game plan to improve the cork room, or I can't remember the name of the room. It, um, the, it's the Fleshman Norm Fleshman, Fleshman. Norm Fleshman yeah. uh, room, that's correct. Uh, we are going to upgrade the technology in that room so that we can um, hold uh, meetings there, just like we're doing now, um, and have an easier time of it. Um, uh, um, in, in a short moment, we're going to hear, or later on, we're going to hear a little something about uh, a change in a policy that will allow some virtual and uh, some in person for committee. Um, so, I'll, but that'll come in a little while. Like, but it, to that end, we are going to do uh, a number of improvements, both to the audio recording, potentially to video recording the room and being able to have it all tied in to a Google Meet so that by that chance, should we actually have some members participating via remote, um, they'll be able to hear and see everything. We won't have these microphones in front of us and um, we won't have to worry about what, you know, who's on the screen and what's, it'll all be taken care of and presented. And, and hopefully we won't have one of those situations where I'm standing there turning a laptop to try to <laughs> video of somebody else uh, doing a presentation. So we are, we are doing that um, in, the, in very short order. I would anticipate in the first, within the next month or so, um, working with staff, both in IT and ed tech, to uh, get these uh, improvements planned out and purchased and installed. Um, and then I've got a little plan for an expansion of the cork room. That's still up in the air. We still, we're still interested in doing so because um, it's a nice. It's nice having a, an alternative room for a board meeting or some other large meeting. Right now, our cork room. Y'all know. Y'all remember before uh, the COVID um, shutdown, we, we were all jammed in like sardines on a on a Thursday uh, morning. Well, I'm I'm uh, potentially looking at blowing out the wall and perhaps gaining a little space into the warehouse um, to make it bigger, wider, and potentially with a bifold wall like the ones that we have in here so that you can actually have it as two separate rooms for most times, like if you want to do selection committee meetings or other committee meetings or uh, you know, group projects. Um, 
and then be able to open it up. So that's still in the works. We're, we're working on that plan. But again, for the purposes of improving our experience at Cork, we are uh, diligently moving to improve the technology. And we'll have that hopefully done in the next month or two. <clears throat> will, that, will that include a cappuccino machine and a, a slushy machine? Well, I was going to say, I, I'm not sure Susan's on here, but um, I think she's going to end up asking you all for money for, for the bagels and, and the, <laughs> the coffee. So now that we're back to in person, we, we may expect to, to have a little something. But okay. uh, Question related to that. Will our future meetings until further notice be here? Because this, this room seems like the only way we can have the meetings in this format. At least August. At least August. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was going to say, uh, um, the only reason I, I'm reluctant to say with absolute certainty anything at this point is that our new school year starts on August 10th. And I think our Quirk meeting would be somewhere around the 15th, thereabouts. So I never want to commit that at the beginning of the school year that we will absolutely have this space. Uh, and for example, the reason we're doing this on a Wednesday this, this time was because normally our Thursday morning slot um, would have been open, but the audit committee has that locked up this month. Next month, they don't. We might be able to do it here on Thursday. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, well, my, my suggestion, I guess, at least from my point of view, is that if we can't have it here, then we just still have it at the main room where we've had it before, and we don't have a virtual connection. We never had a virtual connection prior to COVID. We were met in the boardroom. Susan recorded it on a tape recorder. We didn't have outside participation. We didn't have video screens. We conducted a regular meeting with people in the room. Low tech. Holly. Right. And I, I think that the other um, component of that is the school board policy on visitors. I know that that is going to be revisited by the board. So right now, the way that we conduct these meetings is consistent with the policy. So um, with the social distancing and those kind of things. So I know the board's going to be revisiting that in the next month or so. So I think we'll have more flexibility on how to physically hold a meeting once the board figures out what they want to do with the visitor policy. So for right now, we're locked in to have this room for August. That's already confirmed? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I don't have that data right in front of me, Mr. Porter, but okay. I will confirm shortly. Yeah. And I, I would confirm that this week if we can. Um, I think that's important for us to know where we're coming for the next month, and then we can deal with September when that rolls around. Is, is that, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't want to go too far out on a limb here, but is, is this environment a good and reasonable environment? Sounds like we're... Well, it is if we have to do what Holly's stating, and that is yeah. we have to allow enough social distancing for any visitors, and I don't think we're required to record like we're recording now, and that it's on camera and all of that. That's not part of the policy, and we never did that before. So... Um, then then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll request, um, and as you say... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. The only thing I'd want to mention, uh, David, is whether we'll get the quorum without the, the virtual. virtual. We've got eight here today. I know. Hopefully, we would continue. That, that's the only drawback when you say we don't need all that other stuff. Well, my thought is if all of us were willing to come today, yes. I don't know what it would have to be a flip of the COVID problem for or us to reserve. To August. And we can also do things like, uh, you might remember, in the past, we had all the uh, perimeter of our room lined with contractors and architects and staff. Well, if we can still maintain a Google function and allow staff to participate sure. virtually, they can be upstairs in, the, in their own offices uh, doing that and taking away the seats. We also have the ability to, we have a conference room upstairs. And again, as Holly said, if the policy allows uh, us to operate with visitors, we could even potentially have a conference room as a um, overflow. overflow, I guess, uh, for visitors, so that we can limit the number of people inside the cork room to just primary p participants, so something along those lines. I think we have some flexibility to work with. And that's what I was looking at, just for us to be able to have advanced thinking options available to us so that we're not coming up to two weeks from before a meeting. We don't know where we're meeting. We don't know how we're meeting. And it's just like, okay, here we go again, Virginia. I'm just curious as to those who aren't here, are they all excused absences? Have we heard from everyone else? Nobody's asked yes. for an excuse. Mr. Berger 
has an excused absence, and Mr. Cheshire. Right, that they were they requested before, they requested. Be, and it wasn't because of COVID. They okay. had business deals. Who is excused? Uh, Mr. Berger and Mr. Cheshire. Okay. So we haven't heard from Leah, um, and that may be the only other person I think we. Yeah, we expected her this morning. She she may come. Okay. All right. Um, anything more with staff update? Um, no, no. But I, I, my my walk away from this is that I'm going to make sure that this week, today or tomorrow, we're going to lock down um, the day and the time for this room for next month, and hopefully next month I will be able to give a better update and say that we're ready to implement whatever that is. Once the policies are sorted out, hopefully you know that'll be happening shortly, as well. Our technological advances in the room. And hopefully next month we'll be able to give a more finite answer to going back to Riviera Beach. Oh, and just for the record, the Garden Road is now open. So <laughs> was for last week. Yes, nice, nice and easy. You can get back there easy again. So as you're scheduling, just to remind everyone that you have bulldozers and cranes, and nothing will stop you. And you do have a couple of two by fours, I think, also. It's very persuasive. <laughs> Holly, when is the uh, 109 going to the board? Great for it, or thank you so much for asking. Um, the development of uh, policy 109 is actually t today at two o'clock, so if any of the CORC members would like to come. Um, as far as changing a policy, it's a two-step process. The first process is called development or the first read, and that's where the policy will be presented to the board. The board can talk about it. It also gives the opportunity for the public to give their feelings um, about the policy. Let me go back a step. The policy is going to align with state law for um, advisory boards. Number one, it's going to allow a quorum to be made up of both the uh, virtual members and in-person members. Um, it used to be just in-person could make a quorum, but now it's going to be that combination, which is going to give a lot of flexibility to members on serving on these communities, um, on these boards. Um, additionally, um, that means that CORC is going to be able to do their business. So the CORC members, whether you're virtual or in person, you're going to be able to participate and you're going to vote. So um, development is today at 2 o'clock. And then under state law, we have to give 30 days before it can go back for adoption. So right now it's scheduled for August 18th for adoption. So unfortunately, I believe that's going to miss your August meeting. That's fine. But September meeting, again, the quorum is going to be a combination. So it'll, it's a good advancement and I think really aligns with technology. And that's what I was looking at because August it sounds like we've already got committed that we can be in this room so we don't have to try to make our own laptop connection in the other room, in the Blesham room. And then by September, we would hopefully be allowed to then do virtual and in person and that resolves meeting anywhere we want to meet. Exactly. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, down to public comments. Virginia. Before we go on to that, we talk, you mentioned the Bleshman room and you mentioned the expansion. I do hope the name carries forward with the expanded room. Yes, yes, the we have every reason to. very much like this room where those walls move, right. and those walls move but it's still the same room. I just to be sure that yeah. it contains, that it <clears throat> continues to have Norm's yeah. name. Frank. I have a question. Everybody here has been vaccinated. Why do we need the masks? It makes it more school, difficult. School board them. policy requires it. School board policy. The, the board hasn't changed their policy. When you're in this building, you wear a mask. And, and as adults, there's a different policy for st uh, students in a school than the um, adult policy, I guess, if you will. I don't know how to say it. Right. That, well, and the thing is, I know that the board is going to be revisiting all of the policies that were enacted for COVID for the safety. So what we're doing today um, may not be what we're doing next month. So I would just say, you know, stay tuned because I, I think the, the policies, you know, the board is going to going to see what they need to do and things probably will be changing. Okay. Public comments from our public member. Nothing. Okay. All right, let's go down consent. Uh, FC1. FC2. Let me just do this easy. Did anyone want any pulled? Because I did not. I got all my answers I needed. Uh, did ditto for my comments. Okay. All right. Can you I'm not seeing any. Yeah, let me just, for one reason, I have not been able to 
have a problem accessing my um, list here. So my apologies to That's okay. You. you wanted one or two pulled, Michael? Yes, exactly. Okay. Let me just get to my agenda. Well, you're looking at that. Let me make sure everybody in the room, nobody wanted anything pulled. Sam, you're okay? Tragic? Okay. Bill, you're okay? Nothing pulled for discussion? Bill? Bill, you okay? You got nothing to pull? Okay. I can't hear you. Uh, you don't have anything to pull no. uh, to discuss? Okay, Virginia, nothing? Frank, nothing? Okay, Ken? Lou, you said nothing? Okay. All right, Michael, you're, you, we're pulling whatever you want. Um, I think I'm okay, thank you, I'll pass. Okay. Uh, Move all the items <laughs> on the consent agenda. Second. Second right. by I Sam. Apologies. Yeah. Can I pull FC3? Which one? FC3. Okay. Trigger. All right, Virginia, you want to revise your motion? <laughs> all those that were not pulled on consent agenda. Second. Move forward. All right, all in favor of that? Aye. 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 All right. Michael, did we? FC3. Um, Michael, did we get a, an aye from you? Was, was yes. that a, a yes? Okay. Okay. All right, so all right Michael, back. FC3, go ahead. Um, the question was why the change from tile to stucco on this? I'm going to guess it's cost. And I think when I read further in the write-up, that was the reason because to go back with tile would have been a lot more money than just going back with stucco. Is there a maintenance saving over the lifespan of the building though by having the tile? Tile's a real pain in the neck. I've done a couple jobs where I've removed tile because water gets behind the tile and now all of a sudden you got greater construction cost and water intrusion than you do with just good old painted stucco. Okay. No objection then to the board considering it FC3 then. All right, that's a motion by Michael. Need a second? Tragic second. All in favor of FC3 going forward? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. All right. This might be a record breaking speed meeting. All right. Who made the motion? Uh, motion was by Michael. Uh, we are down to in progress FCA work. Got to you quicker than you thought, Mr. Dolan. Most times, uh, I, I do. I do much more talking. Uh, so, um, all right. Well, um, this month, uh, not not on un, not unlike most other months uh, that we've been presenting, you can see our participation for diversity. Um, <coughs> I, normally, that this slide, and and I, I want. I play. I don't want to call out anybody, but. Um, I got to say, this month we, normally we have the the uh, the expenses <coughs> and the um, accrued money, sales tax money, but because it is the beginning of July, um, this is the start of the end of the old fiscal year and start of the new fiscal year for us, and so we're absolutely crazy busy. So getting that number was um, was down number priority number seventeen in in the world of getting the new books up and running and closing out the old books from last year. So we, we felt it was fair that this month we, we don't have exactly have the numbers. Uh, I'm sure we can acquire them. Uh, but we're, we're still on a very good clip. We're keeping up. Um, what you'll find is that we are spending very close to the money that we've taken in so far. So we're, we're committed to the, roughly the same amount, slightly less, but we're staying in, 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 in line with the uh, amount we're taking in. Um, this next slide is the, uh, uh, of course, the ongoing um, RFPs that are coming up and uh, in process with their dollar values. Um, you'll notice that um, somewhere in the middle there, we have Pahokee Junior High School Facility Renewal. It's a new one that got added on. It was one that we were working on um, to expand and increase the scope um, at that for that facility renewal at that school. Um, we had. Uh, done a, a massive undertaking with a lot of staff to try to source out what exactly needed to be done at that school to bring it up to the high standards that we expect. And uh, so now we're putting out an RFP to get that work done uh, very shortly. Oh. And before you leave that slide. Oh, yeah. oh I, and I'm terribly sorry, by the way. Uh, let, me, let me do this. For those of you at home, I apologize. 
Um, it's not, it, apparently it's the first Google Meet I've ever been in. <laughs> um, my apologies, let me see if I can get this. <laughs> I just got the note that for the rest of you, here, here's the first two slides that you missed. There's the money, and right now we're on this. On this. I, I failed to put this up for the rest of the, the group. Uh, I had a couple questions on this one. Um, Timber Trace core expansion. We already did a couple million dollars over the last two or three years for improvements. Yep. Wouldn't it have been cost effective to do the core expansion at the same time with the same contractor instead of mobilizing the job and disturbing the job twice? It, it could have. Um, there, there are certain uh, pieces that we, like for example, when it came to the main office at Timber Trace, I know that we, we did a little bit of our, our expansion project as part of the FCA um, and improved some of the, the cir circumstances there. Um, but uh, yes, some of this was, uh, we, have, we have two different lists. We have the FCA list, which is basically prioritized based on need, mm -hmm. and Timber Trace was up near the top of the list on that one. That's why it was the first year. And then we have a list of the core expansions, and it was number six on the list. And unfortunately, we couldn't tie the two together. Are we, uh, trying, to, are we trying to do that as more of a standard rule to tie them together as we go forward? Well, about a year ago, a little, little over, well, probably about two years ago, we looked into this, and the challenge was two different sources of money and oh. two different types of RFPs. So when I put an RFP out for a facility renewal, it's basically bring all the old systems up to current condition. That's what the RFP is calling for. The RFP for this core expansion, completely different. It's rip the roof of the cafeteria off, or I don't know, you know whatever that scope is. It's expand the cafeteria, expand the, the uh, kitchen area, the, uh, the nurse's station, uh, all those different things. And those are new construction as opposed to facility renewal. So it, it okay. became a little bit of a challenge to try to meld them all together. Certainly something that could have been done. Had we looked at the, and we do, we try to look at the two lists and see, can we marry them together? So um, Citrus Cove, we just, we kind of, we did, we did them in two different, um, as, as you're familiar with, Citrus Cove is the first core expansion. We did it at the same time or right after or kind of at the tail end of the facility renewal. So. While it was two different contractors, it was one series of two years worth of construction. And Citrus Cove's core expansion is uh, completing this summer, we anticipate. Should be open for, um, for the new school year. Um, yeah, I just wonder, like, you know, if you're hiring a plumber to upgrade the bathrooms uh, in Timber Trace. Mm -hmm. I mean, the plumber's already on the job, and there'd be an economy of scale for the plumber to then go do part of a new addition or expansion. There would be um, our uh, one of our big biggest uh, hurdles has been that, um, especially on experiencing our first core expansion with uh, Citrus Cove, um, the core expansion work is much more disruptive and uh, in, in uh, unaccommodating than okay. facility renewal work. Facility renewal work we can do nights, weekends. We can do a classroom at a time. We can do um, areas that aren't touched by students much more easily. The core expansion. We literally had to create a, a standalone cafeteria somewhere in the school and have them eat there while we ripped the whole ceiling off and, and you know the whole roof and, and expanded the space out. So it doesn't it doesn't play in the That's same fine. operation. <clears throat> okay. Uh, last question: Roosevelt Full Service I see is scheduled. Has there been kind of a final plan of action for what's going to get done? Uh, That's where we left it off at yeah. the last meeting that it was still in discussions with the community um, and with others? Uh, uh, it's still in discussion with the academic team and, and uh, uh, it's, it's, number, it's like number six on my list. It's moving up to like number three now of, well, of things I'm working be, on. If you're doing RFP for something in August of 2021, yeah. that's next month. And that's that means, right. Somebody's gotta have and we anticipate. We've the got education plan set that we know what we're doing an RFP for. And for the RFP, we actually know what we're building. You and I know this. We, we're building a 20,000 square foot building. I know, I can tell you I'm building okay. it. Right? I know exactly what it is. What's going in it? What kind of features are gonna be in it? What, what's, what's the purpose of the building? Not quite there yet. That shouldn't have that much of an impact on the RFP. 
But the, um, the language or the, the focus of the RFP, we've drafted it all up already. We already know what it is. We know what improvements we're going to have to do to the site. We know what we're going to have to do uh, for knocking down the one building and replacing it with a, a brand new building. We just don't know exactly what the technology or what the, the functions are of that building. So that's the part where until I can do that, it's hard to pull the trigger on it. My guess is you can do the RFP because it's still a school and it's still a new addition, but you wouldn't sign the architect's contract yet until that has been nailed right. down for the full scope. And, and in fairness, from a, um, a purchasing perspective, it's not a good idea to go to with a half-baked proposal and then a uh, half-baked RFP and then have a proposal that's, that may vary from it. Well, you got a lot of pushback on that because yes. we've done that before where we put the proposal out there for XYZ type yes. of project and it turns into an ABC type project, which is not the skill set of who was hired. And that's, that's kind of where we're going with this. It turns out it's, a, it's more of an adult ed uh, technical center. Okay. Um, the architect might not have been the guy if, as opposed to when we are advertised it as a, um, an adult education, uh, more classroom function, you know, it's a, the c adult ed community center type of facility. Um, that, okay. that could definitely have an impact in, on who we select. All right. Okay. Um, on the second one, you'll see we've got uh, Winbrook and Pine Grove and West Riviera modernizations. So they're all coming up. Um, uh, that's the tail end of our modernization program. So that's three, basically, that they're all new schools. Yeah. Except, except transportation. Correct. Uh, well, well, except the Belvedere. Is Belvedere a modernization too? Uh, the Belvedere is a uh, green site. Oh, brand new. Yeah, N North ah, okay. North Transportation is the one that's right across from from our my building, right, right. North County, um, and South is down where Old South Tech used to be. Right. So these all, this Those page are, is all new construction. This is all modernization, i.e., new construction. Right. Modernizations are basically we're knocking down an existing facility. Right and starting all over. The only one that's straight up new construction on a green site is the Belvedere site right there. So there's still still a handful of big projects coming up, um, but we are uh, wending down on that list. So, uh, but we still, again, and I've, for the outsiders, we still have a ton of facility renewal work that's gonna go on. We're probably gonna st see a lot more packages coming up in coming months uh, and years of multiple schools in packages, because now, um, many of you are familiar, the, um, if you look at some of the facility renewals here, um, HL Johnson is $6 million, Golden Grove is $6 million. We're not gonna have quite as many six, eight, ten $10 million schools, because we're getting through the list and down into the schools that needed far less work. So therefore, it's gonna be far less money attributed to them, and uh, we're li likely to put two and three schools together in order to make like a six million dollar package or something like that. So we, instead of having a single school the way we do, um, we may put a couple out as single schools, especially to make sure that we give uh, some, some of the up and coming uh, vendors opportunities at those. But we're more likely gonna start banging uh, a lot more of them out together as, as group, uh, a group projects. That's going to be after this list, because everything yes. on this list is double the budgets of what we've had for the FCA jobs. Yeah, yeah. The uh, H.L. Johnson and, and Golden Groves, um, you can see Coral Sunset and Loggers together are 13. Yeah, but from the FCAs that I've seen, it's 2 to $3 million in a school. This has been a lot of our FCA work. And these are like four to five to six million. So well, that's the thing. We're still, and most of them are, are still in the six million range. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're we're getting through that. We're going to start getting into the twos and threes as a single I see. school. Because um, there's less work needed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, upcoming GMPs. Uh, Delray Full Service is something we've been working on for a couple of months now. Um, long and short, we're uh, we're over budget and we're making making ways to make the project work uh, without losing scope and, and keeping it on, on, on target. Um, we, you've got uh, three projects that are in design that are, um, we're gonna be bringing forward at the end of this year uh, for facility renewal projects. Um, I'll, I'll let y'all read this on your own. It's, uh, <laughs> the, 
there's, there are a lot of different projects that are going on. You'll, you'll notice there's a number of facility renewal projects that are in design services. There's a number that are being planned. Um, um, and there's a number that are uh, coming up for um, RFP, uh, coming up for GMPs to the board. Um, you can see down the bottom there the transportation. Um, I was fortunate to spend uh, the other day over at FEFPA's conference. And uh, that's all that anybody could ask about was what we're doing with the transportation projects. They, they're certainly um, big gets, so we want to make sure we get them right, and that's why we are preparing our master plan and working with a consultant to make sure we line up everything we need. And the reason for those are that our, facility, our transportation facilities aren't strictly transportation facilities. They might have other features in them, whether it be a training center or you know, a police substation or any number of different things. There's, uh, South Tech still has the uh, South Intensive that we temporarily put there. So things like that, we, we wanna make sure that when we put that RFP out that we know exactly what the scope is and that all, all the vendors that are um, going for it know what they're getting themselves into. Um, design, quite a number of projects. Um, facility renewals. We've got our core expansions, and uh, you'll see down there, uh, 17 PP. We are on schedule to late in 21 or early in 22 bring you a GMP to start that project. Um, the design phase for all those AE contracts that we approved in May, we're, we're on board now, uh, on working on now. They're doing going through scope validation. Facility renewals, I won't go through all these, but please take a look. Coniston, Forest Hill L, Jupiter L, Lake Worth Middle, Pahokee L, Pioneer Park L, Spanish River High School, Woodlands Middle, Wellington L, Wellington High School, Western Pines Middle, not only doing the facility renewals, but we're also doing uh, demoing of all their old wooden portables out there. Some of the photos from our facility renewals. <clears throat> so the end's been busy writing a bunch of checks. Yeah. Well, and again, um, end of the year, uh, you know, I, I, I got to give it to Leanne and her team in Treasury because, uh, and, and David Massanello on our team, because uh, at the end of the year, all these projects, we've got to get them all paid in order to have them accrued for this past year. And so over the last month, I, I, we, gosh, they must have processed a thousand pay applications in the last month. There's everybody pulling in everything and making sure they had everything built up through June 30th. Um, so it's been a lot of work. And as a matter of fact, I think yesterday was our actual deadline to get all that, those things finalized. So they've been quite busy and um, they've been doing a great job of uh, staying, ahead of, staying ahead of the curve on that. When we do flooring changeouts now, do we do a moisture test on every one? Because we had those issues with the high moisture content and having to put down our decks at a very expensive change order amount? We do them when uh, we work with facilities uh, uh, with MPO on this. So we're, we're doing it, we do them when necessary, when they're based on past experience or if okay. the tiles seem like they're buckling or, Losing. you know, if we're, we know that we're in a swampy area, you know, and there are certain schools that are in, in that environment, okay. we will do those, but not necessarily on every single one. Okay, our ongoing schools. We, um, um, last month we had the grand opening for Triple O High School. We've gotten under construction already. You'll see uh, exotics have all been removed. Uh, the building pad one is in progress. You said grand opening. You meant groundbreaking? Groundbreaking. Did I say grand opening? Okay. I thought so. I'm thinking oh. to myself, wait. <laughs> it would have, it was a, there was a tent out there, so it's not really a school. Um, yeah, pa apologies for that. That was a... Uh, Freudian slip? Freudian slip. Yeah, you want that baby I, done. Yeah, it's a <laughs> couple, couple of years from now. Here's the site. Oh, okay. And the, up at the top of the is uh, Lines, Lines Road. And... Uh, to the left-hand side of this image is uh, Woodlands Middle. You can see the canal, and uh, Woodlands is just on the other side of that canal. So, and down here in the front, yeah, I don't know if you all can see it, but there's a little construction entrance right there. 
that's roughly where our new school entrance will be. The main entrance will be there. There'll be a secondary entrance off of this side road. I think it's called 147th Street, or maybe it's 47th Street. Um, we'll have a side entrance into that, into that campus. But you can see they've cleared a lot and got a lot of materials on site um, moving forward on that. So what is that main street? Oh, this is Lyons Road. That's Lyons. Okay. Yep, and this up here in the top right corner right here, that's uh, Woodlands Middle School. Okay. You switched the picture. Yeah, yeah, I jumped the, I jumped the images, right. And this is scheduled to open a year from now? Two years from now. Two years from now. Two years from this August. Two years from, yeah, two years August. So when does, uh, when do the boundary changes start getting planned out or have they already been planned out for this school? Uh, they have not been planned out, they're in process, but uh, I, yes, I, I, I have been contacted and, and am serving again on boundaries committee and we'll start meeting in another month or two, I think. That, that I was gonna say, I know that they're organizing the team and getting the, the committee members together. Um, yeah. Okay. The other, other new school that we did a groundbreaking <laughs> <laughs> on, there was a tent and some shovels. Um, the, that NTP was started, um, as many of you remember, um, th this is the site that actually has the uh, uh, rented portables for the holding school for Addison Meisner right now. And um, they're, they're busy in the middle of breaking those things down and get clearing them out so that the construction can start. And uh, Moss Construction, uh, this is Ziskovich, the architect in Moss Construction. Um, they're, they're working around. Every time something comes up, they start digging and, and clearing. So, um, hey Dave, uh, Chris Garrison had her hand raised. She probably wanted to talk about boundaries. Oh, sorry. Yes, please, Chris. No, I was just going to tell you that the boundaries are established one year before. So if the school's opening in two years, that would be, they would really work on the boundaries next year. Okay, thank you. Chris, do you want to um, respond on boundaries on this, this one as well, the, the O5C elementary school? O5C in is what um, Ms. Ferris was referring to. The ABC will be meeting um, in the near future to begin working on the boundaries for this school because it is opening the following year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, yeah, as you can see, field offices are set up. This is basically the, the, the site as it was uh, just getting started. So this school is gonna basically have exactly one year of construction work, or actually- It's gonna have less. 10 months. Yeah, and, and it's just like what we did at Addison Meisner and Verde. Wow. The, first, um, the first three, four weeks was demoing the school and the portables and, and whatnot at both of those schools as well. Um, so in fact, they probably really only had about 10 months yeah. worth of construction because mm. they'll have to be done by next June or July in yeah. order to activate the school. Yep, that is really fast. Uh, yep, yeah. and yeah, a lot of our contractors mm -hmm. are, are familiar with this, but Moss has done a, a pretty strong job. They've been, uh, they were the contractor for both Verde and Addison, and now they're the contractor on this one. Uh, and that tight time frame, every little second counts, and they and they really have optimized their efforts to make sure. That, and, and again, knock on wood, you'll see that the other two that Addison Meisner is ready to go. So, okay, the ongoing modernizations. These are two big ones this summer, uh, Washington. We're basically TCO'd on, I think, just about everything. I, um, if um, Angel uh, Garcia is on, he can always uh, pipe in. But um, I, would, I anticipate, I think this is the school that the staff is moving in either this week or early next. So it's all the furniture's in, everything's um, ready to roll. Um, as you can see, school, even school phone numbers are scheduled to be ported over this week. So that's usually the sign when the, they're operating fully out of that school. That, that, uh, that process is, is uh, pretty far along. Here's the uh, aerials. You might recall on this image, um, the horseshoe in the, is the new building and the little building in the middle of the horseshoe is the old administration office that's been redone. And then this building out here was also redone. The, uh, looks like what, basketball court in the bottom right? Yeah. And then that looks like it's ancient. Is that 
I think it's just dirty. The picture? I think it's just oh, dirty. Oh, just sand that's on top. Yes. Oh, OK. Yes. I think this was just the circumstances. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. They probably brushed it with sand just to protect it. If I may, on uh, Washington, uh, one of the reports we received indicated uh, vagrants damaging material and living in one of the buildings. Is there an effort to determine what is actually happening there and also working with the community so we're not just displacing people uh, and that at least there's some type of community outreach? I'm sorry, I, I, I apologize. I, uh, maybe I didn't understand the question. The uh, backup, I believe it was on the contingency, dealt with a fence or some other security matters because of vagrants living in one of the buildings there. And my question was, is there some effort to ensure that the site is going to be adequately protected while we have students in first and second so that we're not just displacing people in need, in need working with community or other uh, social service agencies to try to assist those that are uh, living in the school or trying to live in the school. Well, and I, I, I um, remotely familiar with the, the circumstances uh, of that. I think the, 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 the result of that was actually a, a great coordination between our contractor the the city's police force and now our school police are coordinating with them um, I know that this the city's police force um, certainly is, is cognizant of this area and I know they have community outreach portions of their police force to try to help ensure that there are there's no displacement and that uh, if people need services that they're going to be provided but I again I, uh, I kind of want to stick in my lane because I, I forgive me for saying it this way, but I do construction and I, I try to coordinate with those other agencies and ask them to do to do their duty. And I believe they uh, the city of River Beach police has been uh, quite helpful in that. Well, let me I don't know if this is beyond your track or not, but I think it would be appropriate to ask school police. Uh, to do something beyond just, if you would, flushing out the premises and to take that extra step to ensure that those who are there, that there are community services being offered as opposed to just making that assumption. I think we've been making well, those assumptions again, at uh, some time and we've seen, you know, at least now we have an awareness that that, that doesn't always occur. Well, the circumstances that you're referring to were were a one-time issue. It was not. It's not an ongoing, regular occurrence. It wasn't a uh, um, any sort of homeless camp. Again, we focus on trying to fo do what we do, which is we can provide facilities, uh, academic facilities for the students and the community, um, and and coordinate with those other agencies who do have those expertise. And in that case, I think we've done uh, what we can and what we should. As I said, I, I know we've reached out to our school police to make sure that they're coordinating with the city of River Beach police and making sure the efforts are being um, addressed. And I will respectfully disagree. Um, I think a simple phone call can be made to reinforce with the school police that this is not just a police traditional effort, but also an effort that if there is a situation there that they approach this not just from a security angle, but also from a community support. If you choose not to, I will, I'm not gonna push this any further, okay. but I'm just making that request. No, I, I, and thank you very much. I do appreciate your input and certainly we'll, we'll, we'll consider uh, taking action. Much appreciated. Okay, um, continuing on, here's some of the internal photos for Washington. And knowing their cafeteria in the past, um, this is it's gonna be a, a lot of these features are gonna be such a, a huge improvement and um, certainly welcome. Now the cafeteria is in the existing building that was retained? No, the cafeteria is brand new. It's part of the horseshoe. 
But it, what is the building that was retained? Administration? I, it's, still, it's still an administration building, I believe. So it was admin and it's still admin? Still admin. Okay, but it just got enhanced in terms of yeah. new finishes and lighting and... Yeah, as, as you, you all may remember, we, we basically ripped off the roof, ripped off, ripped out all the guts and left the, the superstructure, the, the, the frame, the shell of the building okay. up and um, refitted it. Okay, Addison Meisner. Again, another one, um, poor Angel. I say poor Angel a lot these days, but uh, these are both of his schools that he's trying to open up. Uh, and they are both on target. They are both uh, well on, on target to open. I think uh, I remember talking to Angel yesterday, and I thought he said he was getting a lot of his TCOs yesterday or today. And I believe furniture is coming in. Is it a, um, oh, is being delivered and assembled as we speak. So um, they are certainly, uh, they're, they're probably a week or two behind um, the schedule of Washington, but they're still well on track to be ready to be open. And here is that beautiful school. You can see the, uh, the area in the far right um, is the construction tra uh, trailer area, which I believe uh, just got vacated and is probably in, in line for sodding and everything. So. so this school went back where the old school was? Correct. We actually purchased a couple of properties right. down on this front corner down here. Yep. And uh, you can see there's actually a street in the top left. It had a, a, a secondary access. Actually, I think it actually, the old school had, I think had three accesses, one from there, one from the uh, northwest corner, and then the main entrance. Um, so we, we, we're, uh, we optimized the space. And I've had a chance to walk through this school and it is, it is quite impressive. The color selections are very <laughs> bright and vibrant. Um, it, it really should be an incredible learning environment for these kids. And of course, this is, uh, and I apologize, uh, on this one I say Addison Meisner Elementary. Let me refer to this. I believe this is an Addison Meisner K-8. K-8, yeah. So, I, was Verdi a K-8 too? Uh, Verdi was, it did expand to a K-8, right. yes, yes. And the new school that's going up, is that gonna be a K-8? No, that is a K-5, but it, um, in the design, of course, well, I guess we do that with every design, we anticipated the, uh, the future growth so there is an area slated for expansion, if ever that were needed in the future. So it but could become a K-8 without any physical changes? Without any physical changes. Oh, okay. the, the sizes of the administrative spaces have been slightly upsized, et cetera, to accommodate a small uh, growth to a K-8. I, I, don't, I don't know too much about this, but there's a, there's a middle school literally right next door. So. The idea of it being a, it might be an expansion that just expands from being 900 students to 1,200 students or something in the future. So I can't say it's a K-8 expansion, but it is land to be for a future expansion. That hallway on the right hopefully is not a student hallway. No, I think that's the uh, uh, administrative offices area, yes. <laughs> bowling alley. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Plumosa School of the Arts. Um, many of you remember um, even back in the day when we uh, redid Atlantic and turned it into uh, Plumosa, we had uh, built it as a K-5. Well, of course, we went through and uh, uh, always had a plan to, to do an expansion for sixth, seventh, and eighth grades. And we are coming down the fish, finish line. Um, contractor is um, cautiously optimistic. They believe they're gonna be completely done with everything. This uh, campus is uh, a two-story classroom building and a big, uh, I guess, performance space uh, building. Um, and as I understand, I sat in on the construction meetings yesterday, they are going to be completed with the um, performance space and all of the first floor of the classroom building. Um, actually, I think they're pretty much all done now and we'll have COs and we'll be finishing up the second floor but the good news about that is that this school is only loading sixth grade first. For one, this year, they're only bringing sixth grade. So I think they're only using, in this building, they're only gonna be using um, uh, the five classrooms in that 
first for this first year. So the, this school was not an art school before, correct? Was it an art yeah, school? Yeah, Plumosa School of the Arts has always been a K-5 arts, arts, and it never had the transition to middle school okay. um, the way um, Bach, it didn't have a Bach. So this school yeah. always had the auditions to get in similar to Bach and Dreyfus. Okay. And so you'll see that uh, right in the center there is that's the big two-story performance spaces, and it's band room, chorus room, um, uh, black box stage kind of thing, and then the far the building on the right is, as you can tell, is the classrooms. Um, and and an interesting point from a construction perspective is we even helped our our furniture vendor, who was struggling to meet all the furniture uh, requirements of all school districts this year. And we're concerned about being able to get all the furniture for um, for Plumosa. And we told them, we only need five classrooms on that first floor. That made them, it allowed them to get all of our other things taken care of. There were other components that they were able to, to address because they, didn't, they knew they didn't have to have an entire school furnished and most of it sitting empty for that first year. What is the building on the left? The existing building, I believe. Yeah, the, this is the... Yeah, I think, is this the old theater? Yes. It's, yeah, I think it was part of the old high school. Yeah. And the main school is down here on the bottom. And this is the existing bus loop where we just expanded and put more covered uh, walkway on um, for the six through eight. There you go, there's a better picture of that campus. So the, the, the new school with the, let's call it the crooked wing there, that's going to be the 6th, 7th, and 8th? Yes. Uh -huh. And top left is still going to be? K through 5. K through 5? Yep. And then what about the building to the right that we just talked about? That, that section there, is that part of the school still? Uh, or is that just abandoned? The auditorium. I would say, to be honest with you, I thought it was the uh, old Atlantic aut auditorium. I'm not sure if it's being used by the Plumosa. The cafeteria is just up and to the left of that. Yeah. So they are used for both schools? Now that'll be K to six, I mean K to five and, and six to eight? My understanding is that those extra buildings will serve both yeah. schools. Yeah. Is there a cafeteria for both the K-5 as well as then the 6 to 8? Or the they all The area was kept from the high school also. It's huge. Yeah, I was going to say it's the old high school. So that was the premise behind doing that, that two-phased. When we built K-5, we always knew there was going to be an expansion to 6 through 8. So they always they kept a lot of those features um, to accommodate both. both so the cafeteria, we won't need to expand in the future. We'll That's going to easily that. handle the, the both. Both sections, all right, K correct. through eight. It was thought through, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay, Jupiter modular classrooms. Um, this is, the, again, it's, you kind of wonder if anybody else is doing work in our building, because again, this is Angel's project. <laughs> but no, um, uh, th there's quite a bit of work going on by everybody else. Uh, but uh, this project is ongoing. Footings for the greenhouse are in progress. So in terms of the staffing thing, Angel's got to run from Jupiter to Boca. It doesn't seem like that's a good split of his time. No. Um, if there's any justification, I went and, and got him a, a temporary uh, field field person, uh, oh, okay. temporary agency field person to be able to do a lot, uh, help him out with some of his work. Okay. So um, we're, we're trying to divvy that up and make sure, because between the two new schools, the two schools he's closing out, trying to open, and um, and this project, yeah, he's he's a little bit busy. So I have uh, he's got a, his own personal uh, uh, runner on on those projects, okay. and that's it. Are there, right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you've been doing. I told you, you guys. I I talk way too much. I get it. Yeah, but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Slow summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> that's right. So much for the slow summer, right? <laughs> All right, any questions for Dave on follow-up? I mean, on uh, in progress. Very impressive. Yeah, very nice. Nicely presented that we could ask questions and it filled us in on what's happening. All right, we are down to policy. Oh, follow-up. Uh, I appreciate the follow-up 
uh, response. Uh, it answered my questions that I had brought up about the pump, because it definitely is not just the pump. Yeah. Uh, I think my reading, all the details in the GMP is what threw it, because it just listed it as a pump. It didn't yeah. say pump and these 80 other items that are part of the pump. Yeah, there was a backstory. Uh -huh. Yeah, there definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I didn't have any issues with that. So thank you for that. Uh, you question? Excuse I, me? Go ahead, I, Virginia. I, uh, it has to do with your posting of the um, CCUAs. You list in several places. It's a two-part process. You didn't get something in time to put it on our, our sheet. And it, gets, it confuses me because I'm trying to balance the numbers out. Is there some way? Yes, it, I, can, I can help you with that. So. Um, this uh, project manager elected to um, close out several of his, or reconcile several of his trade um, line items and collect the money and put it in construction contingency for use in a different area. It's a two-step process. One is take the money out, mm -hmm. put it in contingency, and then uh, after a few weeks or so, they decided what they wanted to use it for. There'll be another CCOA to finish it. So when, when we get that sheet, that shows the money in and out, that's where it gets confusing. I try to track, and then there seems to be gaps, and, you, and, and the gaps are caused because of the two-step process. Yeah, I mean, it's Is all about- Is there some way to help me? Well, it's all about transparency, Virginia. We, we want, everything we do, we wanted to make it clear. I, I understand, I appreciate it. This, this SPA was trying to be crystal clear and say, I'm moving the money here. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to move it over here to, to spend it in a different way. Okay, so and I just have to live with CCO. it. Okay. And, and <laughs> to a certain extent, I, I, when they're reconciling those, those divisions, that they're, they're clear that they're done with and don't need any more money, um, they're reconciling the entire division. So it might be 57000 And then, as you said, the problem is that the next time there's some other project that they're going to take, some portion of that fifty-seven. the new CCOA is only 43000 so you're, you're losing that, but it's, it, as Jim said, it's basically, it's, it, it's being put into that. Um, your phone, Frank? So there is a, a one document in every CCUA called the CCUA log, and it shows you what money we started with, when we took it out, when we put it back, how it's been used, and what the balance is. Um, you can look at that oh. for every single CCUA. It's the next to last page in every document. Oh. Not, oh. It's not on the list that you give us? No, it's, it's embedded in, in the documents. If you want me to give you the CCUA logs, I guess we could talk about that. But, sure. Um, right. Well, that, we already give a lot of information. Because, like, when we do the CCUA report, it's just a report where we're basically telling you about these. Um, if we showed you every CCUA, each CCUA might be 50, 100 okay. pages. Okay. And page number 97 is the one that he's okay. referring to I, I as a log. I don't, need, I don't need all those pages. <laughs> right, but, but you do get to see them, the CCUA log, when we close out every project. It's yes. included. Okay. I think the concept I look at is they're saving X dollars for something that didn't cost as much. That's now back into the budget that they can spend. They don't have to spend exactly that X dollars right. on other right. things right. that came in overpriced. Right. And that's the whole purpose of that contingency to know that we don't know everything and every penny of what it's going to right. cost. I understand all that. So it's money goes back into the kitty, and then okay, we got to spend it somewhere else. So let's pull out, you know, eighty dollars of the hundred we just put in. Right. My my wife doesn't let me do that. I always say, what I saved is a hundred dollars. Can I can I get that hundred dollars to go spend on on uh, fishing gear or something? No. And she's like, no. Fifty cents can, on the dollar. You can have well, twenty dollars for yeah. fishing gear, and and the rest is going to us. So. Yeah. Okay, uh, policy reviews. We have one to look at, 1.09. Um, I'll start with a question I had, which is on, uh, I guess down under line 219 about uh, advertising. So Holly, my question I guess for you is, we're still required to advertise in a newspaper? Do they exist? Uh, yeah. And, and yes, I do believe that is a statutory requirement. Really? It hasn't caught up <laughs> with technology. Because do we advertise all these meetings in the paper? I guess we have to, because I yes. thought we just listed them on our website for everybody to find out about them. No, I believe they're advertised in either the Daily Business Review or the Post. I actually think it's the Post where we advertise. Okay. 
All right, that was the only question I had on that. Oh. And I do see, as I questioned you before the meeting, that we still are maintaining the primary and alternate sections in here. To accommodate other uh, advisory boards that have those designations, even though Cork does not at this time. So our, our updated or revised or original Cork policy we go back to does not have those, so this does not pertain to Cork. Yes, and if you actually go to board docs, you will see the original court policy is back up on board docs. Okay. So Michael, one, Michael, I see you're on the screen. You got a question? Uh, yes, I was going to pop up and uh, on the publication issue, there are repeatedly a number of bills to change the notice publication requirements. And there was one in the legislature this year um, I will say that I didn't track it, but I'm wondering whether we should change the policy to just provide publication as required by law as opposed to locking us into something may change over time. Um, that is an excellent uh, comment, um, and I will uh, forward that over to Mr. Harris because this is his policy. Um, but I, like I said, I, I think that's excellent, and I'll let him know. Right. Um, on other items, um, at line 135, with reference to a carryover board member, uh, someone who's appointing a school board member is no longer serving, uh, where it provides that they may continue. Uh, why don't we have this as they shall continue until the new board member changes, as opposed to automatically creating a vacancy or leaving it as uh, potentially a question of how that should, should occur. I will forward those comments over to Mr. Harris. Um, next on page uh, line 155, um, with reference to the documentation that's provided of information, is there a reason why we're specifying a what appears to be an alternative method of communication by email? Because that would seem to raise a question of whether that prohibits other types of, uh, or that prohibits email from being used for other types of information transmission. I will forward that question over to Mr. Harris, and then I will provide a response to you on that. Since I wasn't drafting this and was not involved in it, Unfortunately, I don't uh, have any insight as to what motivated this particular change. All right, and at 210, I have the same question as Dave on the alternates. Um, and um, who else was I? Well, I said, you've got my, uh, my, my notes, so do you want to just forward all those to uh, Bruce? And I don't know that, that there's a reason for me to go through them all here. And, and that's fine. Yeah, I did get your email this morning. Actually, I printed everything out, and that's what I'm looking at. So if you would like to reach out to Mr. Harris directly, um, that's fine with me. All right, yeah, just give them to Bruce, and when he's ready, just have him contact me, okay? Okay. Thank you. So with that, I'm assuming that if Bruce agrees with some of Michael's changes, which sound reasonable, that this would then come back to court? Or what happens with it if he wants to make a change? I, I think, and I'll defer to him sort of what the, the changes come back to. Uh, today is one of the readings, right? right exactly. We, we're allowed to change things between now and the adoption, so there's certainly an opportunity still to do that. Yeah. Okay, so if, if Bruce makes a change, I would imagine because this policy does in some way affect Cork, that it would come back to Cork again, possibly at the August Cork meeting for us to see further changes or refinements he's made. Yes, that's that's the way it would work. Okay. Don't, don't we have time, strict time frames for advertising? I mean, this, this policy is fast-tracked, but I don't know as far as, I, I guess, it would be what would go before you in August would be what's going to go before the board for adoption, assuming that there aren't a lot of changes to it. Um, so that you have an opportunity to weigh in. I'm going to reach out to, to Bruce and uh, Sean Bernard today about these comments on the policy. Um, and so, you know, I, I, it's kind of, it's not my policy, so I don't really know how they're going to be receptive to that. But 
again, a lot of it too is gonna depend at today's public hearing. Um, if there's a lot of comment from the board that they want things changed and then depending on all of that, what that results in, then what you would get next month at Cork would be something that encompasses all of the changes that have come from any other advisory uh, board meeting, as well as the public comment or board comment at today's workshop. Okay, so I mean, it sounds like we'll get another shot at looking at this, and it'll either be as it's written here, if Bruce decides and, and the board decides they don't want any of the suggested changes, or it'll come back with some changes, but we'll still get to see it one more time. Right, and I also encourage any member that, you know, if, to attend today's workshop um, so that that way you could provide your comments on the record and to the board as well. Okay. If, uh, um, you could forward mine then to the board. I've got the uh, first meeting of the Bar Condominium Task Force on Surfside. I've been appointed this afternoon, so I can't make that. Um, I would say, Dave, um, you may want to take a look and just pop up on the screen at line 398. Sorry, bear with me. Yep, I got 398. Yeah. Oh, I just had it. <laughs> Sorry. Sort of like Pong going back and forth or artillery. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So, so Dave, just, just so you know that, that you have to do the perps walk for any of us that dissent from a vote. This is existing. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're just identifying that um, Mr. Porter is required to announce the vote names of any member in dissent. Exactly. Yeah, that's fine. I'll remember to do that. Yep. Are you dissenting, Michael? I was, well, that's why I was referring to myself as the perp. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, glad you pointed that out. Anything else, Michael? That's it on this. Uh, Kelly's got my other comments and uh, she'll pass them on. Okay. That's good enough for me. Anyone else with comments on uh, 109? Okay, seeing none. Uh, we're down to minutes. Any issues on the two sets of minutes that we had put before us by anyone? I'm seeing no I one. Wanted to thank, uh, I wanted to thank uh, the revision, whoever revised the minutes for uh, getting them handled to include the no objection language. Uh, I will say uh, the first set of minutes, uh, this is, what date is this? The May 13th minutes. Uh, a request to amend to make it consistent on page eight of nine, dealing with FC five and FC seven, and that should be the motion of no objection, as opposed to approve. Will you approve with, with that us making that change? Correct. And that was on the May minutes. Correct. Okay, so the May minutes are then accepted as modified. Thank you. Okay, anyone with issues on the June minutes? Not seeing anyone in the room having objections. Michael, you're okay with the June minutes? Yes. Okay, all right, that's it for minutes. Review and set our next agenda. I don't think we've given staff anything specifically. Jim, do you, do you take any notes of anything we want back? We have two things on follow-up that will continue that into the next meeting. Other than that, I'm not aware of any. And, and our policies, and seven our policies, we'll policies. Five. yeah, we deferred. Uh, we did re did discuss with uh, uh, one cork member some of the, the issues, and we want to make sure that we had an opportunity to have it, that discussion with the open group and that cork member Good. Uh, present. So, Good. okay, anything else by anyone else? Seeing none, we are right. adjourned. Good to see everybody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank